Hello everybody, sorry about the delay, it was supposed to be at 11 o'clock mountain and I just realized I was posting, I was recording the video but to my personal page and not on my <laughs> business fan page. So, you know, I'm still learning to use this particular camera that I'm using right now, which is pretty awesome, it's very cute. Anyway, welcome to the Q&A's with Magdalena. I'm gonna try to make it every Friday uh, at this time, unless we feel that the sun is a little bit too strong. Um, but it's, uh, it's a 10 o'clock Pacific, one o'clock Eastern time. We're gonna try to make it as much as possible every Friday. If I'm traveling or something is going on, then um, you won't see the post. Otherwise, we're gonna keep it going um, if you feel like it's gonna be beneficial for you. So, post your questions. I really received quite a lot of questions for you, which I've got printed out and I'm gonna talk about them. But if you want me to answer them live, then just uh, they're gonna be keep coming up on a little screen down below and then um, keep them short and sweet because um, there's only so much I can read while I'm talking. <laughs> and, um, and then if you can hear me okay, then just give, give me some thumbs up that you can hear me okay. Um, and um, also with the other thing, let me just see whether I can do this on the fly to change my microphone to iPhone, okay. Um, okay. All right, so I'm just I just switched over the microphone to my iPhone, and um, I could you could you guys let me know if you can hear me okay? It just shows me show me thumbs up or just uh, put in there that you can hear me. So the purpose of those Q and A's is uh, is to you know there's always a lot of questions I know you guys are having, so I want to answer those. But also I feel like a lot of times there is um, things I want to share with you, and this is video is such a, such a wonderful way of connecting with everybody on a weekly basis. So I also want to talk about the things that I've discovered in my own life that are working, products that are working are not working, and uh, so that you know. And so while we're waiting for more people to come on, there's only 10 people live right now, um, let's wait for more, but um, while we're doing that, I want to just tell you about a couple of things that I've experienced, which I think you might very, find very relevant. So, uh, you know, sleep, as much as I always talk about food a lot, sleep is actually the other really, really important component of recovering from hormonal imbalances, and especially when it comes to adrenals. Adrenal fatigue, I mean, you can be doing all the herbs and supplements and be putting a lot of money out there and those, but if you are not sleeping well, that's pretty much uh, the end of it. So, uh, hey Susan, thanks for your question. If there's questions about detox, can you post it on our Thrivers page? Because I want to use this time for just generic Q&As in our open community. Um, yeah, so, and say hello to those of you who, are, can you see me? Uh, just say hello so that I can see your names popping out. Um, yeah, so, you know, sleep is really important, and one of the reasons why um, we are getting uh, poor quality sleep, there can be many reasons, and I've got articles about that. If you go to hormonesbalance.com, there is two articles we did on sleep alone. But the, one of the big reasons is the magnesium, magnesium deficiency. And I've just moved to Boulder, Colorado. Hi, Sandy Pickton, um, Pinkston. Hello, hello. Um, one of the key reasons is that we, many of us are magnesium deficient, right? Um, I'm going to talk about it next week or the week after about, you know, what is the reason why I cannot be eating a lot of oxalate foods? And so cacao is a wonderful way of replenishing magnesium levels. I can't have it right now. A lot of people also with gluten sensitivities discover that um, gluten might be a problem, sorry, um, cacao can be a problem for them. So what do you do? And I found that one of the great ways of replenishing, and I just did that uh, for the past four days, and I want to share this with you, is using magnesium flakes. Can you see that? I know the light is a little strong, but you should be able to see that. From Ancient Minerals is the brand that I particularly like to use. So, and there's, I have no association with the brand whatsoever. It's, um, it's just something that I love to use. As you can see, I actually used up a lot of it <laughs> already. So, basically what it is, it does the magnesium... Um, uh, mag is magnesium chloride, which is a form of magnesium different from Epsom salts. Um, for those of you who've been to or heard of uh, the Dead Sea in Israel, um, you know, people go there for vacations and for recovery. They will go there for days and weeks at a time, and they report feeling magnificent. All the body aches and pains go away. They start feeling relaxing again. Anxiety goes away. They sleep well again. And so, it's for sure because of a lot of the different minerals that's in the water, but magnesium is one of the key ones. So there is a couple of ways you can replenish magnesium levels, you know, um, in your body. One of it is that you can basically dissolve these flakes in hot water 
um, and go to uh, the maximum saturation. So like, you know, it then becomes kind of thick and that's called magnesium oil. That's why it's called oil, but actually there is no oil there. It's just that's the, <laughs> that form of magnesium makes things just really, really thick. So then what you can do is, is put in a spray bottle and spray it on your, on your body, on the thin parts of your, especially parts maybe that hurt, you know. Um, what's the difference between calm magnesium? Good question, I'll talk about it in a second. So magnesium calm, let me just say this now, magnesium calm is a citrate uh, form, which is great, uh, but some people get a lot of uh, diarrhea from it and lose soul, which we, we don't want. Um, and so I find that, you know, we depend so much on our digestion to put our nutrients in. Sometimes it's really good to do something transdermally, right? So it means through the skin so that it goes straight into your uh, lymphatic system and your bloodstream. So what I had done with these guys for the past three days, I have not been sleeping well. And so I will wake up at 3.30 in the morning, 4 o'clock, and not feeling particularly refreshed. So I knew something was off. So what I started doing four days ago was um, soaking my feet in this ancient uh, minerals uh, magnesium bath flakes and just took a big pot, dissolved it in hot water, put my feet in it for 45 minutes. I've been doing it for the past four days. And I can tell you that um, it, I definitely, I've been sleeping like a baby for the past four days. So definitely worthwhile um, trying. So yeah, uh, somebody asked about Addison disease. That's an autoimmune disease. Uh, one of the things I do do is I work with women with autoimmune diseases. So Addison's is um, it's a form of an autoimmune disease that attacks the um, adrenals, right? And uh, President uh, Kennedy actually had Addison's disease, interestingly. It's a form of an autoimmune disease. So you know, um, if you Google a um, couple of things like the autoimmune diet, um, Amy Mayers, um, as well as Dr. Walls, W-A-H-L-S, um, you know, they have, they are doctors who both had autoimmune diseases and they put that into remission, especially Dr. Walls has worked with um, people with MS, uh, sorry, she had MS, and uh, she was in a wheelchair and she turned her health around, so I, I recommend those, those resources. Um, okay, let me go over to, I'm going to talk about a few other products in a second, but I want to just go over to the questions and, um, and uh, let's, let's dive into those. So Lisa is asking, um, how do you naturally increase DHEA since we lose it as we age? Um, how about wild yams for that? Also, sometimes I'm, I have wondered about a chewing gum. I switched to use Spry which has been zealotol, would this affect hormones? One last thing, do you recommend yerba mate loose leaves for energy instead of coffee or will it affect hormonal balance? Okay, so those are, there's a couple of questions in here. So DHEA in women is produced by our adrenals. And so you're right that we start losing DHEA with age, but it's also because the adrenals are getting tired. Um, a lot of people are being put on DHEA um, creams and supplements. Uh, particularly, I'm not a fan of those. In fact, you know, some women, there's just no choice. But for a lot of us, if you start taking care of the adrenals and really supporting anything that taxes the adrenals, so it's not just stress, but it's also can, well, it can be stress from not just emotional stuff, but it can also be stress from um, the amount of toxins that you have going on in your body. It can be due to um, stress from physical stress or over-exercising is a huge one. You know, especially in the United States where we have a culture of pushing yourself working long hours as, as women achieving great goals in the corporate world, and I'm not criticizing that at all. I used to do that to myself, but it comes at a price. And so, you know, sleeping poorly, right? If you give your adrenals all the TLC, you will see your DHEA going up. Um, and then wild yams actually don't work. <laughs> so wild yams are not for DHEA at all. They would be used for estrogen. That's where originally there were, there were some creams and stuff like that which are produced, and wild yams actually naturally do not, um, uh, um, do not convert to an estrogen the body can actually utilize. It works in the lab, but it doesn't work in, in the human body. And if you look at Sarah Gottfried's books, who was the New York Times bestseller of a number of hormonal books, she talks about it very openly that wild yams don't work. Uh, Jerba mate, yeah, it's great, you know, but it's still high in caffeine. Um, so if you're trying to cut out caffeine, which by the way, Lisa, since you're talking about DHEA, if you really want to give your adrenal some real TLC, I'll say cut out the caffeine for, for a while. Um, Jerba mate does contain quite a high amount of caffeine, so does green tea. Um, especially, you know, my favorite matcha tea, I love it. There's so many benefits to it. The problem is that, um, unfortunately, it can contain, you know, it contains, um, one teaspoon contains 
as much caffeine as a shot of espresso. So it's, it's, it's really, really high. If you're trying to clear of your adrenals, don't do that. Uh, Lisa is also asking, can you explain how, um, how to know if you need to add DIM? So DIM stands for dialdehyde methane. That's for people who have, women who have estrogen problems, estrogen dominance, typically would be a good candidate for that. Um, you know, I always try to depart from um, pill popping to looking at what are the sources that we can use from food to really help us. And the, you know, the food that is super high in DIM, uh, naturally, all the cruciferous vegetables. So if you have a thyroid problem, uh, you can just cook them and, um, you know, steam them very gently, um, and that's going to be fine. And things like broccoli sprouts, for example, are also a wonderful way of detoxifying estrogen because that's one of the things that happens with estrogen dominance. You have too much of the antagonistic estrogen called estradiol, and you can easily manage that uh, by incorporating like half a cup of uh, Brussels, uh, broccoli sprouts, sorry, not Brussels sprouts too, but broccoli sprouts are super potent. In fact, this morning I just had um, a smoothie with coconut milk, uh, broccoli sprouts, uh, a pear, and avocado, and it was really quite delicious. Um, okay, so before I go on to that, I also want to tell you that, you know, um, alternative to an estrogen ring for um, atrophy, Beth is asking. Beth, so I work predominantly with food. Um, if you want to know, actually, if you want to know more about estrogen and how to manage estrogen naturally, what are the foods that, you can re that can really help you, head over to cookingforbalance.com. There is a free workshop that I did. And in that workshop, I explained how does estrogen work and what are some of the foods that really can help you move the um, estrogen in the right direction using foods. So, you know, I'm not a medical practitioner and all these kind of things like rings and, um, um, you know, pellets and creams and stuff like that is not really my domain. Um, so I would, I'll be happy to tell you what are the foods that we can use or other lifestyle changes that would definitely help. So I want to tell you about a couple of things. One is we are running a giveaway right now. Did you know that we have like almost 60 products that we're giving away? 59 products to be exact, including Bulletproof, uh, sorry, not <laughs> Bullet, NutriBullet. We've got Nativa products, coconut oils and coconut butters and um, and Marie Johnny's products. And all you have to do is sign up. It's on the top of the page. You will see the giveaway Bonanza register when you register right away you get a link and that was my mistake i told you that you, we're gonna email you the unique link i apologize it is not correct um there is gonna be no email <laughs> with the link but when you register with your email and your name right away we'll give you the unique link grab that link post it to your friends uh, who you want to invite to the giveaway, who you think are going to benefit from these products. It is totally for free. You just, we're going to be drawing the winners uh, in the first week of October so that you know who won. And there's over 20 books I'm giving away, books that have really changed my life. One more announcement. Um, and um, is that, you know, um, I noticed a lot of people have interest in thyroid detox. So I thought since I think it's a good time to do a detox now. It's after this, after summer. A lot of us are like finally ready to press the reset button. If that's you, I want to help you make that decision, and I'm giving $10 off from the thyroid detox program. To decide if this is right for you, watch my workshop that talks about toxins that impact the thyroid. I talk about a thyroid that's it's called thyroid detox, but to be honest with you, it actually helps with all the hormones. Um, is, we did it for branding purposes because that's how I started off was with thyroid health. But the truth is that everybody will benefit from that. So don't limit yourself in case you don't have a thyroid. Check it out. It's toxins that impact your hormones, basically. Um, and then there is an explanation of what the program is about if you want to go into the full program. Um, it can really be life-changing, and um, you know people really love it, and they feel amazing. And it's very gentle. So you know we prepare you for the first five days. Then there's a five-day detox. So you're going into not jumping in when you start feeling all these horrendous detoxification effects, right, of just headaches and feeling nauseous and getting shakes and that kind of stuff, you know, we don't do that. We, I designed the program in a way that you ease yourself into it. So, so check it out, $10 off, and the coupon code is summer end, right? Um, and I'm going to post it actually down below this, this page. So another product I want to tell you about that actually I wasn't too thrilled about. So I want to talk about not just the good stuff, but also the bad stuff that I've discovered. And I didn't do it on purpose, but here's a product. I don't know if you can see. Uh, let me turn it around. There we go. So here's a product that I bought. It's kind of dark. I need to figure out a better way of doing lights in the house um, that I purchased. And, you know, I got it from, 
It's called Patty Wax um, Apothecary, and I got it from Whole Foods um, because it smelled really good, amber and smoke. Then I turned, you know, and I uh, lit the candle, and I developed a headache within like 10 minutes. And that's kind of unusual because I don't react to essential oils. So I thought, hmm, I'm going to go and check out their website. Are they using pure essential oils? And fair enough, they don't talk about what they use on their candles, which is like the first warning that if a company doesn't talk about what they uh, put in their products, that's already a big red flag, right? But to give them a benefit of doubt, I email them and say, hey, what exactly is that fragrance? What do you use? Is it synthetic fragrance? Is it essential oils? And they responded and I said, we are using a combination of essential oils and synthetic, but we don't use phthalates. Phthalates are like the worst um, because that's what, they, that's what makes the smell stick, but phthalates also have its own series of horrendous problems um, that create a lot of hormonal havoc. Uh, anything that smells really nice that has got a synthetic, like a lot of shampoos, commercial shampoos, that smell really good, that bind the smell to your hair, that you smell, your hair smells like, nice for a long time, that's the work of phthalates. And so, fair enough, so they don't use phthalates, but it's obviously other chemicals that gave me a headache. So what's the lesson from here? Well, the lesson is if you look at the back of the product, and you don't have to really look at it, but let me just, you probably won't see it, but the point is that there is no mention here whatsoever of what's inside, and that's a big red flag, right? And I'm not demonizing Whole Foods. That's where I shop every day now living here in Boulder, but I am just want to give you a heads up that check your products because these things can be very disrupting for our adrenals. Sorry, for our hormones, actually, overall. Let me go on to other questions. Hey, you guys, so um, can everybody hear me well? And show me some sign that you can hear me okay. And um, what did you guys think about the stuff that I was showing just now, the magnesium oil flakes and the candle lights? Have you had any experience like that yourself when you bought something thinking is really healthy and then you uh, tried it and it was actually like, uh-oh. Um, great. So show me some thumbs up or hearts. That would be really nice to, to see that, those flying in. Um, yeah, so let me go on to other questions that we received from Stephanie gartner Well, She says, if someone is losing hair, how much hair would be concerning? Would strands of hair coming out in the shower be concerning? Also, do you recommend seed rotation breaks or should someone continue to do seed rotation even after they have balanced out their hormones and are starting to feel better? Great question. So about the hair loss stuff, you know, um, so we, it's very normal to be losing between 100, um, oh, so Mary says, I bought smoked salmon and couldn't believe it has red and blue food dye in it. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Um, actually, Whole Foods is kind of honest in that way. I even found salmon there before where they said that pink dye was used. Um, and so they, they actually had that in a product label, which was kind of funny, but at least they're honest about it. Obviously, I did not purchase that. <laughs> um, yeah, so the question that uh, Stephanie asked, so losing between 100 to 150 hair a day is perfectly normal. Um, so if you want to be, you know, micromanage oil, just, um, just count the hair really actually and see whether it's okay. And you want to kind of compare also to the past patterns. Like, is that the amount of hair you've been losing before? And if it's more, then you want to start observing it. And, you know, one, one hormonal balance that comes to mind right away when it comes to hair loss is typically thyroid issues or low, low, low thyroid uh, function, right? The other one you can look at is um, estrogen dominance. That was actually my problem after I fixed my thyroid. My, I was having hair loss, but not because of thyroid, but because of, um, adre uh, because of the estrogen problems. So, but I would look at the thyroid first, um, Stephanie. And the second question about seed rotation. So if you guys don't know what she's talking about, um, seed rotation is um, a method that is described on my website. If you just go to hormonesbalance.com and enter in the search button on the right side, uh, look for seed rotation. There's a, there's a couple of articles that's gonna come out to explain what seed rotation is. It's basically a way to rebalance your progesterone and estrogen levels using seeds and cycling them throughout the month. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna explain the whole thing right now. Um, by the way, who's familiar with seed rotation here? Can you just put a note here so that I didn't know, I know whether you guys um, are familiar with the method? So Stephanie, I would say that um, I will bring the hormonal balance to a really good place, like a place of um, you know, real stability and for about three months. And then, um, no, you don't have to do it forever. I mean, the whole idea is that 
your body should be able to rebalance itself. And if it's not, it's just telling you that it still needs these estrogenic compounds, um, you know, in order to do well, right? So, yeah, so I would, I would just try it out, um, stopping for a while and see how you feel. Lisa Bean is asking, I have thyroid and adrenal issues, constipated and bloated all the time. Um, uh, where do you buy, Beth is asking, where do you buy broccoli sprouts? Not familiar with them. Oh, okay. Um, well, um, actually, it's in my fridge. I could go and grab them. <laughs> they basically, I'm not, I don't want to leave the camera, actually, but um, broccoli sprouts are these little tiny sprouts. You can get them in most of the health stores. Um, they typically sell alfalfa, uh, radishes, as well as broccoli sprouts. So if you go to the refrigerator section with the prepared or the cut up vegetables and fruits are, um, then you, you will find it there. It's, I mean, most whole food sells it for sure. So Lisa is saying, you know, like this whole constipated and bloated all the time. Lisa, so there's something going on. And you mentioned that I use flaxseed and taking megaspore biotics right now, taking a half capsule a day, not sure what else to do. Well, there's actually a lot of things you can do. I'm not sure if you have been following me for a while, but I mean, being constipated and bloated all the time is never going to be a foundation for good hormonal health. Um, let me point you again to cookingforbalance.com. Go to that workshop, watch it. And I explain there in detail, like how the digestion impacts your other hormones. And then just two quick points I want to mention today is that one is that when you're having constant like constipation and bloating to the digestive system, it is considered stress. The body doesn't differentiate between physiological stress and emotional stress. And so going through these notions with the body is, is struggling with digesting, struggling with expelling food, that is considered stress. And that, uh, that definitely adds on to adrenal exhaustion. So that's number one, and constant cortisol spikes. Um, and so you need to address what's going on. Like, why, is, why are you having? What are you eating? Do you have a parasite? Do you have bacterial infections? Do you have H. pylori? Um, you know, those are some of the things that, um, do you have SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth? So working with an integrative practitioner really is going to help you dial it in. Uh, but I would start off with the elimination diet. So, you know, I talk about the elimination diet on the cookingforbalance.com site. Um, that basically explains how to do the elimination diet. What are the big food culprits to cut out in order for your digestion to start working again? So I'm glad that you were doing flaxseed and using megaspore biotics, but it's a little bit like, you know, burning, uh, bringing potpourri into a home and burning it, right, having nice smell, doing something nice and, you know, kind of comforting for yourself while the house is still very dirty, the floor is so sticky, and there's dishes in the sink. You know what I mean? So take care of those things first. I'm not sure what else you have done, but I would definitely recommend to look into the other issues. Gail Mathia says, she's funny, she said, I wish I never had any hormones. Uh, they make me fat. <laughs> so, you know... <laughs> Actually, let me tell you, Gail, uh, that if you had no hormones, you wouldn't be here with us today being able to even type this message on Facebook because you will be dead. Uh, it's as simple as that. Hormones are there to support us. Uh, they give us a good quality skin. Uh, they give us beautiful hair. They give us good mental functions. They make us women. Um, you know, they give us uh, beautiful breasts and you know, moisture in our vaginas. I mean, the whole shebang. And so without it, we really would not be able to function. But since you're talking about weight, and I know this is a big um, issue for a lot of women, you know, interestingly, um, there's a couple of hormonal imbalances that I can mention uh, right off the bat that can be connected to weight loss resistance. The first one is definitely going to be low thyroid function. You might want to check out. If you're not sure which hormonal imbalance you have, go to hormonesbalance.com, my site, slash quiz, Q-U-I-Z, right? Z, Z. Um, and, and then from just looking at the symptoms, it will give you a pretty good idea of which hormones can be out of balance. So thyroid is number one. You know, same as high cortisol, low cortisol levels can be an attributor. Um, women who have insulin resistance tend to put on weight around their tummy. So it's really interesting how, you know, it's the, where the fat is distributed can tell you what kind of adrenal, um, sorry, hormonal imbalance you have. Uh, so women around the belly is oftentimes insulin resistance or some kind of sugar problem. And, um, and then women with estrogen dominance um, would typically store the fat around their thighs and their butts, 
right? Isn't it fascinating, like, how different hormones can impact uh, where we store fats? So, yeah, so look into those, Gail. And, you know, if you follow me for a while, then there is a lot of solutions we have for, uh, for a lot of hormonal health. Um, and it kind of what brings me to the next point where um, Abdi Danielle Bertram is asking, what are the best foods for perimenopause and menopause? And that's the kind of question that I will not answer just like what are the five foods? Because honestly, if there were like these five foods you can do to get rid of menopause, then, you know, then uh, gosh, I mean, we would not be having this conversation, right? Like everybody would be doing it. Well, here's the thing, um, you know, the, one of the things I talk about in the, hormone, in the Cooking for Balance workshop um, is that the hormonal balance in every person, every woman, is really based on a foundation of three things. And think of it as like a three-legged stool, right? If for you to feel sit comfortably on a stool that has got three legs, all the three legs need to be well balanced. And these three body systems are the health of your liver, the health of your digestion, and the health of your sugar levels. So as much as, you know, I wish I could say, I'll take black cohosh, and actually black cohosh can help with some of the symptoms like hot flashes or night sweats. But guess what? The minute you stop it, it all is going to come back. So, you know, and, and I also feel like when you're not addressing the root cause of the issues, then things are going to happen later on. Like, let me give you an example. A lot of times women with hot flashes have it, because of fluctuating sugar levels, okay? And I've worked with a number of women who say every time at 10 a.m., like say I have breakfast at eight, something sugary, like a smoothie or a muffin, and at 11 o'clock, I know I'm gonna have a hot flash. And it was coming on regularly, almost every single time. So you go like, oh, what's going on? And actually, if you think about it, her sugar levels was dropping, and the sugar levels bring down a number of hormones, including estrogen, including the luteinizing hormones, including the FSH, and that's what gives you the hot flash. So imagine if you work on that one leg I talked about that's called sugar rebalancing, and you start off your day with a solid breakfast, and I always refer to these as PFF breakfast, protein, fat, and fiber kind of breakfast. If you go to my website, look at the recipes, and click on breakfasts, all these breakfasts are very high in protein, fat, and fiber. Some of them have, have a little bit less protein, but they surely are not sweet breakfasts. If you just change your breakfast, that is going to change, for example, how often you get your hot flashes. And um, yeah, and it's going to change just how you feel. Isn't that amazing, just a small change like that? And I can tell you over and over again, women I've worked with who had um, given up coffee, rebalanced their hormones by eating uh, the PFF breakfast, so really sustaining their sugar levels, had tremendous changes in their health. So I really recommend to try that. So why do I talk about, so what's wrong with taking black cohosh? There's nothing really wrong with it per se, but the reason why I don't like using point solutions like that is because if you have an ongoing sugar problem, then, and you're not addressing that, and instead you're just kind of masking it with a black cohosh, what would happen is fluctuating sugar levels is gonna lead to adrenal exhaustion, Right? So that DHEA is going to start dropping. That I talked about it earlier when Lisa asked about DHEA. And that's the precursor for testosterone. So your sex drive is going to be nil. Your sense of alertness is going to be really poor. You're going to start forgetting things. You're just going to be becoming like a real vegetable. Right? So testosterone is obviously the pick-me-up. is the masculine hormone. Uh, lack of confidence, a lot of confusion, lack of self-identity. It's really quite fascinating how hormones can actually even determine our whole personality changes um, can happen when we rebalance our hormones, right? So this is the reason why I really want to prompt you to take care of those three legs I talked about, digestion, liver, liver, liver <laughs> health, and sugar levels, um, because these things are just so incredibly powerful. Okay, so I hope that has answered your perimenopause question. Let me take on one more question from here, and if you guys want to post questions on uh, to Facebook, then go ahead and I'll read them out. Um, Jabine Fauzia is asking, how effective are probiotics? And can you recommend foods that are effective or simple to add in busy lifestyle? Sure. So I'm glad you asked Jabine about probiotics uh, because one of the things I talk about in a Cooking for Balance free workshop 
So for those of you who are just joining us, it's cookingforbalance.com um, is a free workshop. You know, it's, um, it's something called the estrobolum. The estrobolum is a subset of bacteria in the microbiome, in the gut, that is specifically responsible for metabolizing estrogens. So what I'm actually saying is that when you incorporate good bacteria to your gut, um, <laughs> you might start having different expression of your hormones. How amazing is that? And I know we like to rely on probiotics because we live in an era of what's the one pill that I can pop. But I want to stretch you a little bit here because probiotics are, there's a lot of issues with probiotics. We can do another segment on that. But, you know, it's a question of uh, what are the strains? What is missing in your gut? That, that st is that strain present in what's missing in yours? You wouldn't really know until you try. There's many different forms of probiotics. There's the Bifido um, uh, uh, group. There is a lactobacillus group. There are uh, earth bacteria, right? And there's sporebiotics. And so there is these different groups. They all have different functions. Um, I think it's important to experiment with all of them. But the one thing that, apart from experimenting with pills, Always remember to do fermented foods. Thank you, Beth. She just talks about, do you recommend fermented foods? Absolutely. Um, the only caution I would have is for people who are going through, um, who have histamine intolerance, and you would know that right away, because when you have histamine problem, one glass, one sip of wine, and you start feeling hot, and you get start having hives and breakouts, you start having stuff on your skin, uh, you develop a headache, allergies, and uh, anxiety. So anything that's aged, whether it's cheese, wine, um, I'm out of battery on my phone, how about that? Uh, cheese, wine, whether it's fermented foods, right? All of those things can really play a big role in, um, in triggering that. But other than that, I love fermented foods. Every one of them has a different profile. So whether it's kimchi, sauerkraut, miso, if you can tolerate soy, and I like fermented soy, otherwise I'm not a proponent of soy. Um, I'm also not a proponent of kombucha, only because kombucha is, is full of yeast, and a lot of women are having candida problems. Um, we are just about to publish an article in Candida, so stay tuned for that. Um, it's a, there's a huge connection between that yeast overgrowth and hormonal health. And so I'm not a fan of kombucha, and you would know that kombucha doesn't agree with you. When you're getting like bloated, you're getting a little tired, almost a little drunk <laughs> from kombucha, that's a sign that the yeast are playing up, and that's not a good sign, okay? So that's what I have for questions, and before we um, end today, I want to just show you one more thing, since I've been talking about coffee and caffeine and stuff, so let me just show you this uh, product that just been sent to me by these guys from, the brand is right up here, let me show you, um, <clears throat> it's called Four Sigmatic, right? And um, I'm going to post the link in either above or below. I don't know. I'm always confused by these things. Um, they have a special discount for us um, if you buy from that link of, I think it's 10%. So what it is, can you see the word chaga? So they have chaga, they have a whole combination of different foods. They also have reishi. Um, and I think Thrive Market sells them as well. These are medicinal mushrooms that help boosting the immune system. These drinks are really great. I love them. Um, it's a wonderful substitute for coffee. Like if you are thinking of getting yourself off caffeine, but you want that something, you know, bitter and is that dark, uh, creamy, rich flavor first thing in the morning, because that's the part you, ha you find it really hard to depart from, then I have good news for you. These mushrooms are really amazing. Um, what I do is I typically do two, take two sachets put it in a, either in a Nutribullet uh, or in my Vitamix, and then add a, a little touch, like a teaspoon of coconut butter from Artisana, because I love Artisana, and, uh, and then water and then maybe a touch of maple syrup or honey with warm water, right? And so I just blend the heck out of it, and it becomes this beautiful latte. In fact, I had it this morning already as well. So these mushrooms are great. You might have heard of reishi being like the anti-estrogenic, sorry, um, anti-carcinogenic mushrooms a lot of people with cancer actually are taking. But you know, why wait till we develop something, right? Like start now, you know? That's the whole idea, right? And uh, who agrees with me that like prevention is the next big thing? That's, that's really our thing and that's really what I wanna teach you. I don't wanna work with women who have breast cancer. I wanna help you prevent breast cancer. Speaking of which, um, before I log off today, I wanna just tell you what's coming up. 
And uh, October is going to be the month of breast cancer. So I've prepared, my team and I are preparing a bunch of content, recipes, articles. We're going to be doing inter I'm gonna interviews with three experts, um, one doctor, one chiropractor who is a, a sur survivor as well, and, uh, and one um, advocate. And, you know, the two of these women are these <laughs> women who have been really taking care of their health for a very long time, and yet they develop breast cancer. And that's really what I want to talk about, because I have a funny feeling that most of you here are not eating Pop-Tarts for breakfast. You are already trying your best, right? And so, you know, I would say that I think this is super relevant. So anyway, stay tuned for that. There's going to be awesome content coming up, um, awesome content coming up in in October from us on breast cancer, okay? And prevention. I don't want to just talk about cancer, but also the prevention, which is absolutely and completely possible. Most of breast cancer are estrogenic cancer, so just heads up on that. Look out for more stuff. Um, somebody just asked if I do one-on-one -on -one consults. No, I do not, but if you email us to support at hormonesbalance.com or the contact form on my website, we'll direct you to practitioners who I recommend and they do one-to-one -one consults. Okay, you guys, so did you find that helpful? Um, is this worthwhile for me to be doing every Friday at this time? I'm going to work on the light so you can see my face a little bit better. This is the first attempt uh, with the new equipment. So, yeah, so let me know. Was this helpful? Um, and, um, you know, I'm going to be collecting questions, and I'm going to keep going if you find that helpful. If not, then, then we communicate in other ways. Okay, well, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. What I mean by that is can you find at least one thing, one thing that you can do something for yourself that's really nourishing, you know, self-nurturing. Um, I'm going for a massage today for, I've got a two-hour massage booked today, um, and so I'm really looking forward to that. Yay, thank you. Thank you for the comments. That's, that's wonderful to hear. Okay, sounds like I think I'm going to keep going with those Friday, Friday sessions. All right, everybody, have a wonderful weekend, and um, I'll see you next Friday. Bye for now.